All right, boys, we are here. Coach Hart, Coach Brian Hartline. Before we get into the episode, as you know, because yep. you are, you follow the boys oh, now. Oh, yeah, I like Let's, the boys now. Yep. We got to read Chevy. Chevrolet is a trusted company that's been innovating for the last 100 years. Up to now, most electric vehicles have been either too expensive, too small, or too limited in their capabilities for most people. Chevy is committed to making EVs available for all Americans. There is a growing network of public charging stations and over 1,900 certified Chevy EV dealerships. Chevy has convenient ways to research and shop EVs online. EVs for everyone, everywhere. Coach Hart, Yo, I am. That was really good. That was pretty well done. I'm fired up that you're here, bro. Yeah, I'm glad to be here, man. Because you, yeah, you guys made it. Like, you were the I bridge. I, well, I tried to be. I saw, I saw you posted that. I was like, yo, they got to come. Because Ohio State wasn't on. I think we were going to go to Iowa, but then right. when you reached out, and then I was like, oh, yeah, Brian Hartline, no, weird flex, but it's a flex. Brian Hartline follows me. I will yeah. DM him and be like, hey, what are we talking? Like, oh, let's so go to Ohio, started the conversation. Ohio State. No, he, well, he he responded to a tweet. He was like, yo, yo you guys need to come to Ohio State. Check out Columbus. Yeah. Like so. Dude, of all the places, when we were going through, like, spring football tour, what should we do? This is, like, back in December. Yeah. Uh, I was like, bro, it'd be sick to go to Ohio State yeah. just to, like, see the differences and stuff like that. But I thought there was no way. There's no chance they're going to let us in there. And you sold like, out. I was like, I literally you sold out. We sold out our live in show. Columbus. Only, so. only sold out live show. Good spot, man. Wild. That's yeah. fair. Just yep. crazy. Uh, first question. Yeah. Are you happy for Michigan? Uh, I never, I never am. <laughs> no. You know, I mean, yeah. Do you talked. think it's good for the rivalry? Yes. Absolutely. You, in a weird love, way, you are happy. I love like everyone hating everybody. Yeah. You played here and now yeah. you coach here. Like I played here and coached here and never planned on coaching. And, and, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I hate, I hate the team up North. Yeah, I tell okay. you what. Yeah. It's, it's funny how you guys are scared to say your name. Yeah. I, I love that. <laughs> um, you know what you guys should do yeah, next so, year yeah. in Ann Arbor? Mm -hmm. Something real disrespectful. Nah, like you know. in like, uh, like the sixties. I always remember seeing this like black and white video of the, the Ohio state team running and pulling down the banner. Okay, I remember that one. Back in the day, right? Lot, way back yeah, in the day. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about like yeah, yeah. black and white TVs. Yep. You guys should do something like that. Yeah, I'll talk Just about really it. Really ignite the you know? fire. Yeah, I think uh, I think the fire's lit. You know, I think yeah. I think it's pretty good right now. I'm kind of, you know, it's going to be a heck of a game. We talked about it, the importance of it and how big it is. And Hearing your voice. Looking forward to it, man. What pissed, yeah. what pissed you off most about that second half last year? Uh, losing. Yep. Outside of losing. Oh. Uh, yeah, it was a, being a... Yeah, yeah. Hey, what? We, no, yeah, not at all. Smith, Head coach Arthur, Arthur Smith. Coach, hey, we were supposed hey, to have year yeah. 10 last year. Yep. You know Do you have any uh, comments? I used to be the not assistant comment. tight end coach. I'm just, I don't want to get in trouble. Yep. But I'm going to fight for you, Will. Yep. I appreciate that. That's all we need to hear. The, 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 put in a good one. Hey, see you, boys. Yep. Hey, all right, I appreciate you guys. Year 10.2. Year 10.2. Y'all saw the punt set out there. We will be We will be back. Yes. I'll send my list of demands. Don't worry. That is wild. Yes. I know. Wave the physical. Wave the physical. You're part of the oh, demand. You're part of the demand. Yeah, I'm part so. of that. You're part of the demand. Oh, yes, dude. 270-pound left tackle. Um, hey, yeah. real quick. Let's give some flowers to Art. Like, what a dog. Ah, dude, he really is the best. He's Coach the best. Smith. Art? Oh, yeah. He awesome. is one Unbelievable. of the yeah. best. Dude, he never, I never got to obviously play for him. Got to know him. Awesome, dude. Awesome. He, dude. he was the assistant tight ends coach okay. when I first got there. He, we would be, like, before practice would start, like, right after warm-ups. Yep. He would stand in the corner and hold a football, and we would have to run and try to punch the ball out on him. And I would tackle him to the ground and hit him as hard as I could. And now he's the head coach of the Falcons. There's a reason why he walked up the wheel yeah. and not me. So he thinks you. I, I mean, I did make him tougher. But dude, talk so, yeah. about a self-made man. Oh, yeah. With from a, like, Absolutely. they always say, like, show me the son of a billionaire. You'll never see a self-made man. That's a self-made man. It's unbelievable. Incredible. I don't think people realize his back, the, the true story. People don't right? know. I know. Like That's the craziest thing to me. FedEx. The son of FedEx, basically, essentially. Right. He goes, no, 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 hold yours. I'm going to go yeah. get mine. He's going to go get his. Yeah, yeah. The hard way. That's, that's impressive. And then Will Compton will be on the team this year. Nice. With a list of demands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure we got to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get right. Okay. okay. But back to the what pissed you off yeah, most yeah. outside of losing in the second half of that Michigan game. Uh, I would say. Uh, in man in an obvious run situation. I would say that it would be the. We only scored 20 some points. I mean, we're the best. We can, can be it was were the best offense in, in the country, and we didn't execute at a high level. So, you know, I don't look anywhere else besides ourselves, and that's how I feel about that. So, there's got to be some part of you though. Yeah, watching the defense give up two back to back seventy plus yard runs in the Ooh, fourth quarter. Like you know, I would say because yeah. if you if you watch it, they're in man. 
in the corner, like the receiver runs him off and literally runs the corner into the safety. And that's what got yeah. Edwards to run that first run. And then they literally ran the same play the other way, the yeah. next play. That's not a shot. I guess it is a shot, but I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just you trying know, to talk a little ball here. Yeah, a little ball. I mean, okay. I mean, that was a 10 second play. Let's go. Now our turn. We got to run it back and account for that, but we're rolling. You know what I mean? So in our heads, I'd, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess it, it's better than a eight minute drive where you don't have a chance maybe to respond, but now we can respond. And anytime the ball's back in our hands on offense, man, we feel in a good spot. It's Put it in our great. hands and we'll operate that way. That's all, that's all we care about. I was here for the first quarter of that game. We did, I did college game day, and then I went and watched. Yep. And you watched your wide receiver crew mm -hmm. for walk out on that field, and you're like, this is terrifying. Like they, You guys went, like, what, 12 plays in the first drive? Yeah. Down there. I think you only got three, but, like. Yep. P beat it out. Ohio State's thing is, like, hey, we score fast, and we score in a hurry. Score and points. when I saw them controlling the clock in the first, like, series of the game, yeah. I thought to myself, oh, boy, we're in trouble. Yeah. The boys might be in well, they trouble. They got here. a room now. Like, I see the kicks. You guys can get these kicks. I see the kicks, the timepiece. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you have the background, being a receiver okay. yourself. Are you the swaggiest? I don't think you coach. Should, I don't think you should ever like self promote. I think you should just let everybody else talk about it. So, whatever they think, they think. I mean, he's got I mean, a short I'm not haircut, gonna, like, cool voice. I'm not going to like answer that question. I think it takes a, a confident, I mean, I don't, a confident person to operate the rooms that you have to operate. Obviously, coming from. I mean, the room, though, is full of like elite dudes, man. Like, I'm not sure about operating anything is, is more like, you know, trying to pick the right guys that fit what we want to get done. And then the boys come in and they kind of let it turn into what it's going to turn into. Like, not that it's, I, I help guide the room, but man, those guys, Marvin, Mac, Julian, all those guys run that room. Xavier Johnson, like I, I keep it on the tracks, but they run the show. You said you didn't want to get into coaching. So what got you into coaching? Yeah. So I, uh, cause you had a nice career. I yeah, mean, I was, I mean, it was kind of good. I was living back in Columbus. Uh, my brother was coaching, off the field uh, for Coach Meyer. Yeah. And there was a fad there for a little bit where like former players would come back and run scout team. They kind of nixed that. But I remember when Clemson had some guys doing it, they talked me into doing it. Bobby Carpenter was doing it, one of the linebacker. Like, yeah, he was a stud. So we had some guys come back and I, my brother talked me into it. While I was here, I was kind of coaching up the guys. I think Terry McLaurin was here and Paris Campbell and some of the guys. And I think uh, Coach Ciano was now our DC at the time. Kind of got wind of that as I was over there. Like, man, I think you got to hire Coach Hart. And I heard this story after the fact. So Coach Meyer was like, hey, Hart, I'd love to have you as a coach. I was like, yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> I was like, I appreciate the offer. That's not happening. And then uh, that was in bull prep in 16. And then he kind of, you know, we reconnected at one point, February before spring ball in 17. He gave me that opportunity again. I just kind of felt like, you know, God was giving me a chance to right or wrong. And I didn't have much going on at the time. I was like, man, I'm living up, up, the, up the street. Let's see what this coaching thing's all about. Never left since. That's really how it happened. Sounds like you were getting a little bored. A little bored. Exactly. But you didn't want to no, at you, first, and then you're you kind of sitting it. on your ass a little bit longer, and you're yeah. like, I'm like, I, I need to really do something. Ain't got nothing going on. Let's do something. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it wild how that happens to you guys? Like, when you're playing ball, yeah. a lot of the time, especially late in the season, guys yeah. are like, fuck, man. When I'm done, I'm not doing a thing. Ever. I'm fish every day. I'm going to do this yes. every day. And then you get, like, a few months out of it, and it seems like guys always get, like, forward quick. Because in a way, like, your life's been structured since college. Like extremely structured. So structured. Extremely structured and extremely competitive. Yeah, right? you get burned out a little bit. And I don't know about, you guys are hilarious, but like I got burned out with the sport at some point, you know, and I had to get away from it. And I'm like, I'm out, you know, and, and then you kind of sit back. I went to my first like tailgate. I'm like, yo, this is sweet. Like, this is why people like college football. <laughs> yeah. This is why we like football because we grew up in it. You don't even realize it because we've never tailgated. Mm -hmm. We've never done the things outside of football that make it so great. And then you get a chance to do it and you're like, I get it. And then you recharge your batteries. And like you're saying, like competitive wise, I'm like, yeah, I got to do something. I can't be sitting around for next. What burnt you out? Years. What burnt you out with football? You know, I think the hardest thing for me is I was, you know, I love to win. And I was, you know, I had a, had a you know, a good amount of teams that we were a big 500 all the time. Like we come down to the last year in Miami and, you know, we didn't pull it out, whether it be Buffalo or New England or whoever to get to the playoffs. And we were just barely missing wild cards. And, and, uh, I hated losing, so it, it, it tired me out. I would say that coupled with, chain, you know, turnover on staff, turnover, head coach, position coach, coordinators, like, it's a, it's a, it's a people business. And I, I got tired of getting guys to like me over and over and over and over and over again because you do. That's part of the game. Like, you got to play the game in the NFL. And if you don't play the game, it's easier to kind of move on from you. 
So you're tr- you're earning the trust of new head coaches and new coordinators and new position coaches, and it just gets old really fast. And if you get in a spot where you're winning, there's not much turnover, man. It's it's easy easier sometimes to ride that wave. But if you get in some spots where it's not, I've seen it in the past. Uh, it can make it harder, you know, to kind of continue to prove yourself every year. And so I think that kind of a combination of not winning enough and turnover on staffs, a lot of it just burnt me out. Yeah. You know? Well, you ended up going to the Browns. It seems like that's the wrong way to go if you want to go to winning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I will say uh, <laughs> two hours from home. I'm going to go ahead and take my butt back yeah, home. Yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Miami, go back home and, uh, and see how this plays out. But, yeah, it is what it is. As a coach now, like, how do you see the contrast between being a coach and a player? Like, what are the biggest differences for you, yep. especially on game day? Like, because you still, you can see it. You're a competitive yep. cat. I'm sure there's times you look out there and you're like, man, I can still put this shit on and do it. Yeah, I mean, I probably could do a couple reps, not as many as I used to. Uh, but I would say the difference between being a player and a coach, uh, it is different. I mean, I think that you try to pull on as a player. So I try to coach these guys the way I'd like to be coached. Uh, I'm not a big fluff guy. So, like, I'm getting straight to the the point. Uh, you know, so on game day, though, you know, you're always kind of nervous because it's like, hey, it's in your hands. I feel like we do such a great job through the week. I don't have a lot of nerves on game day. Like if we do a lot of good work and boys are healthy and we're out there putting our best foot forward, like I'm ready to roll. And my nerves have not been crazy, very competitive. You know, whether we're playing in the CFP or the rivalry and all those definitely different. You wish you could be out there. I'm like, okay, this is that one game where I wish I could go out there and hit somebody. Like, yeah. but that's very few rivalries. One of them, CFP is one of them. Uh, that's just kind of, you want to be in the hot moments. So it's a little different. Yeah. But it's out of your hands. That's the yeah. biggest thing. You know, you, can, you can't impact the can't game. do anything about no. it. And now when you're watching these players and like, let's say, well, I'm not going to name a specific school because that'll be tough for you to answer yep. the question. But like a, a school that you know from a talent standpoint really doesn't stack up to you guys. Right. How do you navigate? Because it's probably got to be a lot easier when you're playing a top tier team. If you're in the CFP, you're playing like a, you know, a big rival yep. team. It's probably easier. You know, the boys are going to be ready. Like we just got to get, get to the game, yep. keep the boys healthy and let's roll. When you're playing a smaller time school, like, do you switch up your coaching? Are you a little harder on the boys, like, keeping their mind on yeah, definitely what the big picture is? From a grading standpoint, absolutely. It's like a different mindset. But I'm actually more, like, uncomfortable against maybe a lesser foe than the other ones because the, the rivalry in those games, they take care of themselves. Right. The only way you don't take care of business is if you're not mentally, like, ready to turn it on like you are on those you games. You see it every year happen. That's the biggest – that's the worry for me. Like, so – those are the ones that worry you more than the other ones. Boys are going to be ready for those. The other ones are like, could they talk themselves out of it? Those are the ones you worry right. about, in my opinion. You know, so, uh, again, you got to make sure you put these guys in good position and they have to execute. But if you got pros, pros, no issue. Right. Those are the ones that worry me. Yeah. yeah. Even pros, pros, dude. I mean, playing the league, we would play teams that were on the end of the year. They're out of the playoffs. They're not. Yeah. And you hear the boys in the locker room saying, oh, we're going about to Oh, I'm about to get four sacks this game. I'm about to do this. And you, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you play long enough, you start to realize, like, we should be worried, boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we if should everyone's talking worried, like this, yeah. you, we got to be a little yeah, more we nervous. Feel a little too loose. You're, like, see guys in like year right three, now. and they're like, oh, I'm about to go off. I'm, you got to, you're thinking to yourself, like, God damn, we might lose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We might lose a little bit. Hey, pre, hey Detroit's out. They, they're not going to play very hard. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 It's like, brother, you know, like, it's still a game. Like, it's still competitive. Oh, yeah. Still competitive. Oh, yeah. What are some of the biggest misinterpretations or myths going from player to coach? Uh, the assumption that a player can't be a coach because of blank. And that we get labeled a lot. Um, I think a lot of players think they can just be coaches even because they played the game. Uh, that's not the case either. But, uh, you know, I think that th- it's good for the sport to have former players be in the sport as coaches. Now they have to earn it, and I get all that. It's amazing how much we didn't know when you get to being a coach. Um, the correlation of you know, how important is it? Does it, you know, attribute to wins? That's what it's all about. But man, as a player, I wish I knew what I knew now as a, as a coach, you know, then. Uh, but I think just getting mislabeled, that's part of it. A lot of players think they can just be coaches. It's not how it works. And vice versa, just because they were a player doesn't mean they couldn't be a great coach because they didn't draw pictures since they were 20 years old for eight years in Vizio. Like, doesn't mean they can't be a coach. So uh, that's it. I think... Players also probably don't realize the amount of time that goes in for these coaches and uh, the investment they have. I guess the hardest part sometimes is I'm kind of an all-in kind of dude. And so uh, I'm all in on and athletes and, 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 and the guys I pick for our room and all those kind of things. In this whole new world, sometimes you wonder if the, the uh, feeling is mutual. 
you know, yeah. and, and, and and I think it's hard because coaches leave sometimes and then players can now leave too, like in the college world. Uh, but I value the relationship and sometimes, uh, you know, that's lost in all of this, especially in the NFL world, right? I mean, there's still relationships or should be with coaches. Um, I think the NFL, they minimize that importance, you know, relating to coaches and coaches having players backs and they minimize that. Uh, but uh, GMs don't take that into account when it comes to making decisions. So when you talk about the change of everything going on, how do you navigate like the transfer portal? When guys, you yeah. like we've talked about your wide receiver room, uh, Dave talked about your defensive line room, your offensive line room, like you have studs. Yep. There's no question. You have NFL talent all around this building. Yep. How do you get guys that are be sitting behind that NFL talent with probably just as much talent and saying, hey, you got to be patient, yep. even though you could go play for this other big school? Sure. I think that, uh, I think it's relationship based. I mean, if at the end of the day, I think if you guys sit down and have conversations, a uh, hey, coach Hart, what's my path? And you have an honest conversation with them and they can feel that um, it should, it probably is okay. You know, you can work through all that based on the outside variables that maybe the family or anybody else is feeling too in his circle. Uh, but uh, the relationship matters, you know, and I think of the honesty being like, Hey man, like it is going to be tough. It's a long track. If you need this and this, maybe you should, you know, if you want to explore options, you can, you know, just be, if you keep the interest of the, the young man, number one, it always works itself out. I think that um, it's okay if guys find a better path somewhere else. I believe that. Like I'm, I'm so player oriented. And if you keep it that in that world, I think it always works itself out. And so I try to have conversations and I give honest feedback on what I would recommend them doing. And I think again, based on the relationship, you can have those conversations. It's gotta be the hardest with the special teams coach. <laughs> the special teams coach usually gets the guys are like, you know, twos are working through it. Like you guys that are playing three downs. Yep are not going to be playing special teams a lot. You, and you're like, telling the guy, hey, you probably should look at the rest. He's like, hey, hey, he's a core four guy. Yeah, we need to keep this right. around. Right. And I, I would tell you this, though. We have in our wideouts, like, if the if you have some young guys coming in, right, they have some guys, opportunities. If you don't trust those dudes, then all of a sudden I'm looking up and Julian Fleming's on the front, front line of KOR blocking some Will Compton running down on freaking kickoff. And so, like, Stud. you know, a stud. So, like, <laughs> you know... <laughs> At the end of the day, uh, it, it's, an, you know, yes, you need your guys, your young athletes to step up because we believe, frankly, that's the gateway to offense and defense. I mean, you can't carry that job at a high level in the special teams world. How do you expect to go play on offense or defense? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it can be tough. Uh, I'm sure that's a conversation for Coach Fleming. But yeah. yeah. It's like one of those things you got to like, you tell them the truth and like, they have, now they have to deal with that. Like, yeah, I mean, hey, hey, listen, brother, it is what it is. I had to tell them the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're keeping the best interest of the player though, how do you not yeah. become a little more selfish? Because at the end of the day, your your career yeah. is riding on 18 to 22 year olds. That's true. And so you're looking at a guy that's like, I know in two years, he's going to be ready to go. But yep. right now he's not, but he could play somewhere else. Yeah. Like, how did you disassociate that for you as a coach? Because at, at the end of the day, like, you know, this isn't your ceiling for you. Sure. You want to keep going and growing in the yeah. ranks of the coaching world. Yep. I would say, though, I mean, if you're that sure of a young man playing in a year or two and him knowing that, that's okay. It, it, I mean, at the end of the day, doing it a year earlier doesn't ensure you anything. You know what I mean? But if, if Coach Art or any of the coaches are looking at you and telling you with certainty of where I see you're going to be in a year or two, again, based on that relationship, you know, you ride that out. All your goals, which is probably the NFL, is still there. If you're telling me you want to speed the clock up, I mean, that's something you have to, you have to talk to, you know, talk when about you say yourself. speed the clock up, do you mean like leave Unless early? You do it in a year, a year earlier. Yeah. And then if you are doing that, you're probably not doing it. I mean, where are you going? I mean, we are blessed and Coach Day is a phenomenal coach and we are the best offense in the country over the last five to six years. So if you're not playing in this offense, where are you going? Who's your quarterback? Who's the court? You know, there's a lot of variables that you're, you're now playing with versus being like, all right, I'm going to keep working. Coach Hart's telling me this, this, and this, you know go from there, you know, and, and, and in the transfer world, like I've never taken, there's never been a transfer receiver that come to Ohio state. So you see who's in the room, you see you're competing against, there's some variables that are under your control versus when you leave variables change. Yeah. So, what are your career ambitions? You know, I would say when I have a job for coach Hart. Yeah, man. Like, um, you know, in my soul, I'm an NFL guy. I love the NFL. I think it is the all-star league of college football. I don't care where you're from, what school, small, big. Like, it's the best players in the world. There is no other pl better players. So I love that. I love the, uh, uh, the separate, you know, the degree of separation being so small. So I love that. I love my alma mater at Ohio State. So 
my, my heart's in the NFL. You know, and I think one day I'd want to coach there. That's the reality of it. When, I don't know. I mean, my, my in-laws are here. My wife's from Columbus. Like, there's just, like, a big foundation that's been built here. Yeah. So, uh, I love coaching the receivers. When I started, you know, I'll be the receiver coach for the next 15, 20 years. Leave me alone. I'm good. And then that kind of grows. And as a competitor, right? I mean, you're like, oh, people start putting nuggets in your head. I'm like, yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. You know? so like, yeah, that feels yeah, good to hear. That feels about good. It. And I'm like, I do. I love, I would love to, I love building the receiver room. I love that. That was an awesome opportunity. And choosing it, developing it. I like to do that on a team. I like to be a head coach and try to, you know, do that team wide, not just a position based. Kind of doing that now offensively, you know, a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like dealing with people and I like building a team, whether it be a staff or whether it be a, you know, individual players. I, I like that. So, you know, where it ends up, couldn't tell you, but uh, that intrigues me for sure. NFL head coach? Yeah, I would say, you know, I want to be able to win a national championship in college. So it'd have to be, you know, a top program that paints that vision that that can get done there and then, or the NFL. I mean, I think uh, for me, I, you know, like you guys are probably similar. All the marbles got to be on the table. Like it has to be the pinnacle or maybe I may not have as much interest. Yeah. You know? If the pinnacle is not an option, a Super Bowl or a national championship, that's hard for me. Yeah. I want it. I want all the marbles on the table. I love that. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, going by Coach Hart. Yeah. There's another Coach Hart in the Big Ten. Oh, there is? Yeah, it's the running back coach from Michigan. Okay. Mike Hart. I don't know if <laughs> oh, yeah. He said, oh, there is? Part of him. If you two <laughs> maybe got in a tussle, who do you think would win that? Me. Fight? You think so? Oh, yeah. Is there, is there any OC? Oh, yeah. Is there running any? Running back legend for the University like of Michigan. Any, any OC in the country. They're all losing. He's, to you in a wow. fight? Oh, yeah. Pick them all. This is why we had this motherfucker on, dude. <laughs> yeah, I did not think. <laughs> he is the running backs coach. But I do. I do. Uh, I fuck with that answer yeah. big time. <laughs> All right, cool. Hey, That's literally, I bet we don't need nothing else, boys. Hey, we got to pick any OC in the country. They lose it. I got to tell my players, like, if you're not, if you can't view yourself as the dude, you're never going to be the dude. You ever met a dude that didn't know he was a dude? Sometimes, you know, every now and then. I don't know. Every now and then I got to look in the mirror and be like, I never met a first round dude. I didn't know he was a first round pick. Really? Wow, I got selected in the first round? Holy cow. Like, if you don't view yourself that person, you're never going to be that person. See, I think there's a big difference, though, because there are guys that, like, you look at them and you're like, oh, you're so-and-so. But then you look at the way they act and everything, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, you don't know how really? popular you Dale really are. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Patrick Mahomes. Really? Yes. I was just saying well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Looking, does not know he's Dale Earnhardt yeah. Jr., bro. Really? I, that, Pat, that's, that's fascinating. Yeah. I want to know yeah. about that. I really want to know just about the that. Most, just the most salt-of-the-earth type of guy really? you'll ever meet. He I is, love that. He's awesome. A sweetheart. Well, you don't think he, he doesn't think he was one of the best race car drivers in the world. I'm sure he ever. thinks that, but I'm just well, saying, I'm talking saying. about the the, the, the carry. You also know oh, imposter syndrome. He won't, say, he won't say pick anybody, pick anybody, they're losing. Oh, really? That's a confidence. But I think okay. that's a confidence you had to have being a white skilled know. player Maybe. growing up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean I you're a little, unicorn. Yeah, you're an absolute unicorn. I was not like yeah. talking back. How hard, just, how hard was that growing up playing, you know, uh, being, being white? Yeah. <laughs> Playing wide receiver. No, you, had to, wide that, receiver. you had to have that confidence, I mean, yeah, you man. You better. I mean, don't get me wrong. We, we could write books probably about, you know, how, how some of those, like, back and forth went. I'll go straight for you. I'll you write I mean? it for you. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? I remember, like. I mean, brother, you got your own story to tell. You're a white linebacker. I know, but I like how you said. No, we, I'm, I like I liked him saying we could probably write a book. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we can write it. That's yeah, we like, can all get in there. I like that. But yeah, I mean, I remember all of them from, you know, Cromartie in New York with Revis going, gosh, she just wouldn't leave the freaking conference. New England and in uh new york um but all of them I, you know i playing all the different co corners throughout my time uh i never talked first i would just you know throw a bug out there yeah yeah, yeah. And, then, and i'll keep my what kind of bug i don't know if i can say that now and is there my a middle of the road bug we can, can throw out that. there you know what i mean because you know you know um all that matters is the guys you're recruiting and the guys in your room that see it. They're going to be like, yo, coach, you got the sauce. So, like, you know, that's they, what... They, you know, what you got to do, you got to put on your tape in front of yeah, the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You let I mean, them know. No, a lot of times, I mean, I'm getting far removed now, so that's, which is good, you know. Tape's getting grainier. Oh, yeah. 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 We, turn it, we turn it on sometimes, you're like, wow, I'm getting old now. Getting that's yeah, why you come grainier. on here. Yeah, no, maybe. So talk a little shit. But no, it's, uh, it's been good, you know, I think. Uh, but no, at the end of the day, I didn't, I didn't want to get anybody fired up. I just made sure that, you know, after I made a play, they just... They just knew. They heard something. Shoulder pads, yeah, just, shoulder pads, something guys, like that. Hey, don't show your friends that. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the exact opposite. Have them on yeah. the helmet. Oh, you yeah. never talk. No, no, no. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I was a mouthy individual. Qu choir boy. Yeah. All American kids. I would say definitely you on the sideline uh, with Sherm. I, was it Sherm? Yeah, Sherm. Yeah. I don't know my favorites. Yeah, well, he that was 
an outrageously late hit on, yeah. on uh, Marcus. That was just crazy to watch. Mm -hmm. And that's when they were still the Legion of Boom. Okay. Like, uh, who's the safety? Who are 31? Was. Cam. Chancellor. Cam yeah. Chancellor. Chancellor, Earl Bro, Thomas, Animal. Bobby he, Wagner. He would, he would walk Jay around Wright. with that dark visor on when we were playing them, like a noon game. I would be like, this motherfucker is a safety. And there was a couple of plays we had put in. It's called structure. The safety rolls yep. down. We would just push it to the next guy. Sure. And I'm thinking to myself, I got to hit this fucking dude. Because you've seen him. And his hits he puts on, he's like, he don't care about me. Oh, no. Yeah. He does not care about me super, at all. We're getting super comfortable with Coach Hart's in here because we're kind of letting some words oh, yeah. fly now. Flying. What, 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 Just what, what, for oh. some beeps. You had two in that, two Fs in that little store. Oh, did I say fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't say fuck. Three. Four. <laughs> I don't want to say fuck. It's like, it's like. Uh, I don't want to say fuck loud because I don't want to be disrespectful. It's like, the, it's like the top 100. That's the first time I kind of saw you. I was like, oh, this guy, I could rock with him. Roll. Top 100, what do you mean? When you were on the uh, the top 100 doing an interview and you're like, I can't say, and they're like bleeping it out every time. You're literally doing you the exact it? same bit. Is that why you did the same yeah. bit? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I absolutely. always watched it and I was like, that's funny. Will did that. I didn't know you stole that from me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I watched you. Oh, <laughs> this, so is, this is when I, we didn't even know each yeah. other either. I was like, oh, this dude, he's, I like this. Hey, you're a good, you're a good hang. I almost dropped <laughs> another one, bro. I am getting too comfortable. I like it. I yeah, am right, getting too go, comfortable. Man. Yeah, I mean, we, there, was, you know, there were some good ones though, talking back and forth. Yes, because dude, when you're when you're a skill player, oh, a white skill player, you watch them out there and you're like, hey brother, good luck. And then they kind of like, <laughs> yeah, it is. They do yeah. something real nice out there, and it's always like, hey, you're pretty shifty for a white guy. Hey, you're pretty quick for a white guy. Hey man, you're faster than I thought. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, dude. Again, yeah, knocks for that one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you remember Deion Sanders? That makes you feel good oh, when you like, get that. Oh, yeah, you get that. It's like, oh, I'm the really cultural yeah. stamp of approval. Yeah. Or because at some point I might have said, I mean, I tried to warn you. Like I just give him one of those, you know, because I'll do a little bit of something. Yeah, they'll laugh, and then I'll do something and like tried to warn you. Don't show your friends. Don't show, oh, don't show yeah. your friends. Or well, you get called like white chocolate. You're just like, oh, so that was that I was never got that. That was bro. our thing. That was our me and Brandon Marshall in Miami. Uh, so like that was our little you know, back and forth. I was playing with B Marsh in Miami. That was a good time. Even Mike Wallace. What was it like playing for Brandon? Brandon playing with Brandon Marshall. Awesome. I mean, he was he was that shit crazy. But like. <laughs> I love playing with them. And we yeah. had a great rapport. Uh, we still stay connected now. I, every time I'm in Miami recruiting I, or Fort Lauderdale, I'll try to see him. Yeah. He's down there. But uh, I love B. Marsh, man. I love, you know, I love that guy. He's so. doing an outstanding job. Yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah. I am athlete. Yeah. yeah. Top three wide receiver talents that you've coached. Top three I've coached. In the league, all in general. Like I'd say in general, they're probably here, in the league right now. Not, no. They can be here. Yeah, they can be they here. Be. Uh, that's hard. I think that, uh, you know, they're all different in their own way, frankly, believe it or not. Uh, you know, the things that Terry McLaurin does and, and did is different than the way Chris Olave plays and the way Garrett plays. Um, Jackson's his whole other animal. And then Marvin Harrison's his whole other animal. So, like, I had to pick three. Wow. I don't, yeah, I mean, those five are really the, the ones. Rank them. Rank them? Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, what's, what's, who's, what's who's number the, one? Who's number, number one? one? Scary Terry? Uh, I would say, I would say Marvin right now. Just Ooh, Marvin an, Harrison I'm Jr., doing, I'm number gonna one. Do NFL, NFL, like, you know, um, NFL makeup, NFL prototype, right? Yeah. Marvin's that NFL prototype, you know? Wow. Six, three, six, four, 208. Pushing sub four four probably. He was a sophomore last year, right? He was a sophomore. He's got one more year. He does. He's already he's already projected like top. Yeah, but five. you think it's in his best interest to sit out this year and go to the draft, right? Not not play college. No, that's yeah. just that's just. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, that's a north a, conversation there. That's I'm just saying, saying he said it's an up yeah, north yeah. conversation. No, I mean no. no, not absolutely not. I think you'd say it's because like he does have major goals of what he wants to accomplish. You know, whether it be post team awards. Winning rivalries, winning champions. He does not give that up. He's an ultimate competitor. And if he wasn't doing that, he wouldn't be who he is. So that'd be yeah. like a total alter. But that of is, that is a fair, I mean, yeah. just the way the I business said it world more works. more of a bias if I don't want to see him. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, I don't feel, want to yeah, see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to mess with him. He do whatever he wants. I hope you know? he gets paid. I hope he makes a billion dollars. Yeah, brother, you should go sit out. Yeah. Especially yeah. that last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little too physical. That game's a little too physical, yeah. maybe, you know? Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, but Marvin, okay, so you got Marvin one. Yeah, and then I think. You know, you have to go Jackson. All right, Jackson. And the only reason why I feel very comfortable saying that is because Chris and Garrett chose him as well. So that's their comment on. But like when, when they were kind of talking about, it, I mean, the, the things he does, he makes me look like a really good coach. And I don't, like, I didn't do anything. He just, he just was himself. Yeah. So, but his, uh, his change, change of direction, ball skills are ridiculous. Like he's going to be very, very, very good in the NFL. 
Uh, Chris and Garrett, you know, they're, you know, Garrett had a hell of a year, obviously, rookie of the year. Uh, you probably have to give him the nod just because of that then next, you know, and then it's between Terry and Chris. You know, one was 11th overall pick and one makes 23 million a year. I don't know. So it's yeah. kind of a coin flip. I would say that. They love Terry up in Washington. I, got, I know. And I got to say, probably, I would just probably say Terry right now because he's done it in the NFL for three or four plus years. That's worth his weight and goal on me. Yeah. A guy doing it one year is one thing. And Chris knows how much I love him. But you're talking about an elite group of, of dudes there. And I think that it's easy It's easy to do it once. Really hard to do it two, three, four, right. five. Yeah. More years like that. MB coming. Hell of a list. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, those guys, they, they're going to look and they're the guys that weren't one, you're gonna, they're going to text you. Yeah. They they are, why didn't you they're all in they a group are. chat and they can yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like that's a stud group. You just, yeah. you just named off. Yeah. And Terry becoming a, a captain too. Like obviously I played there, but I don't know him at all. Yep. And the, the next I stood, I do still have there. Like they just rave about him. He was and a from a leadership. For sure, wasn't he? I uh, think he might have been. His, uh, yeah, I think like in the middle of the wild. season, he yeah, might have. I know he called up the team yes. in the middle of a game and kind of like, you know, thrusted himself yep. to be like a captain guy. I don't know if he got the C I the first year. I think mid year he did. Yeah, do that. yeah, I know yeah, mid year yeah. he like rallied the no, guys. Great at one point. dudes, man. And just we got to wrap it up. All I'm that. Just the boys, the boys are just telling me. We yeah, that's good. Okay, man. all right, yeah, dude. Hey, this has incredible. been incredible. Yeah, I'm good. We're gonna do this again sometime. I'd love to. When you become the head coach, okay. Yes. Yeah, and then he, he comes on the bus. Honestly, he makes that leap, too. Yeah. Yeah, man. We, we want list. you to be a head coach. On the list. We need it for us. Let's go. Let's hey, do it. It's been if an honor, man. People, just, like, let me know. Yeah. What, you know what I mean? Well, we know some people yeah, now. You know some people. You put in a good word. Yeah, yeah, well, well, I appreciate you guys being here. Real talk. And uh, enjoy Columbus. Great people. Great city. It is fun, believe it or not. And I, yeah, uh, listen, you guys I, I was here. here once before, and I did enjoy well, it. Real talk, it's, it's awesome. That people are awesome, and they're here to support y'all. You guys sold out your spot, so have a good time. I'm glad you tweeted, bro. Yeah, man. I'm good glad stuff. you tweeted. The yeah. boys need to know. Happy to the be boys here. need to know. Please subscribe. Please five stars. Thank you.